Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tom Miller. I am with the Cleveland Clinic's K-12 Education Programs Department, and we are a proud member of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. We are here today to showcase a variety of the Ohio Distance Learning Association's content providers who have amazing programs in all kinds of areas of career learning. Uh, Cleveland Clinic will be back tomorrow uh, and Thursday. Our programs that we do with distance learning are in middle and high school. So, but I'm here as your MC host and uh, we are really excited to have a, a great group of people, our content providers, uh, that will be doing the showcase today. If you are um, have any questions, we are monitoring the chat and I'll be the, the facilitator of that. And uh, it's, of course, this is an audio and video conference, so uh, hopefully you're seeing and hearing us and let me know if there's any technical issues. The Ohio Distance Learning Association is a resource for teachers here in Ohio and is an aggregator of all things distance learning. Uh, and there is a big opportunity uh, in just the, the last couple months, Ohio Distance Learning Association is partnering with MCOECN uh, to bring some really cool technology, Zoom technology to schools. And we are a membership organization. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a simple link here. Uh, we encourage all teachers to become a member or an associate participant. So a member is a paid membership. Uh, it's $10 a year and it comes with a variety of benefits, including being uh, a member of the U.S. Distance Learning Association. An associate participant is somebody who will get all of our information, uh, but not receive all of the benefits. Uh, so you can go to our website and find out more information about that. We encourage you to, and we'll send some information out after the session. So that's all I'm here to do today is to just tell you a little bit about Ohio Distance Learning Association. We're gonna kick it off right away. Uh, we are going to shift over and we have a presentation from Info Ohio. We will then uh, share information from the Muse Cleveland Museum of Natural History, COSI, Muskingum Valley ESC, and the Pro Football Hall of Fame will wrap us up today. So, uh, like I said, if you have questions during the session, you can put them into the chat. We'll decide whether those are something that can be addressed by the whole group or whether we will actually um, uh, wait for those to be at the end of each person's, each presenter's session. So, without further ado, We'll go ahead and uh, get started with uh, Info Ohio, and I'll stop sharing and go for it. Hello, my name is Kathy Cooper. I'm an instructional team specialist with Info Ohio, and I would like to share some information about Info Ohio and how we support career interest and development with K through five students. First of all, Info Ohio is the Ohio's pre-K-12 digital library and it's free to all Ohio students, teachers, and parents. We have four basic services. We transform student learning by licensing a collection of instructional content which is selected to support Ohio's learning standards. All free, no cost to Ohio schools. We develop free web-based instructional tools to help students learn and grow and we provide professional development and support to Ohio's pre-K-12 educators to help them integrate technology and adopt strategies that positively affect student learning. And the fourth uh, service that we have is we provide a support for an integrated library automation system for more than 2,200 Ohio schools that serve more than 1.1 million students statewide. And that's probably what you know us best. It's been more than 20 years we got our start by supporting library automation. Today we've expanded to include services and some more support than ever before. If you are on the Info Ohio web page, www.infoohio.org, we do use geolocation as a behind the scenes step in the process for logging into the Info Ohio website, which makes it really easy for students, teachers, and parents to access Info Ohio resources. And what that means is that when a person is in Ohio, you will be automatically logged into the Info Ohio site with no additional password. If you are somewhere other than in the state of Ohio, you can try manually logging in, and you can see the button up here where it says Info Ohio State Users. 
you can use your district password and username or the statewide username and password to log in. If you're not sure about it, you can always click the button and you can easily find your password. And if you need more help, all you have to do is go to supportedinfohio.org. Here's to click to hear your password. This is the site for the grades K through five resources. And since we do have a lot of resources, we're only gonna focus on the career exploration and look at Kids Bit, Kids Info Bits, Book Flix, World Book for Kids, and uh, World Book Early Learning. Each resource has its own small gray button, an I button that gives information for additional resources, which include training and support for the resources, similar resources to check out, recommended grade levels and URLs to use for easy access when linking students via your uh, LMS or some other kind of correspondence. Located in the middle of the page, you will find Kids Info Bits, which is a relatively new resource for us, and it offers a visual way for students to search areas of interest. Students can choose from books, magazines, periodicals, images, and videos for interesting facts. And we're going to look at the, the resources under people. There are a couple of different ways to get to these resources. If you click on people, you will find uh, subcategories appear. And by selecting a category, a list of related subjects appears. Each has a little sound bite, as you can see the microphone next to each of the topics that will assist students with reading words. They can select a subject specific subject, specific subject to continue their search, or they can go back to the home page, which is what we're doing, and they can do a keyword search. Kids Info Bits use something called predictive text, just as Google does. As I start to type the word career, it offers a list of options, allowing me to select a more specific keyword search. So after selecting career choices, the results are retrieved and sorted into several different categories. The first three items in each category will appear showing the resource type, book, magazine, or news, and then I can select from there. It also tells the publication date and information on the word count or the Lexile level. Students can further narrow down their resources by using um, some of the search within a results list. This allows students to narrow their focus and scaffolds their experience while searching in a controlled environment. The green information button that you see on your screen allows kids to uh, identify whether the articles are basic, intermediate, or advanced pieces of information. So that's kids info bits very quickly. Here's an example. You can also limit your resources by doing a, uh, you can share them, you can listen to them, you can do highlights, you can translate. There are a variety of different tools that you can do once you've retrieved an article. The second resource that we are going to look at is probably our most popular resource because it's very kid friendly and it also includes a lot of resources for teachers. It's called BookFlix and it is found in the left column of the K5 resource page. It was updated within the past year, so it's very colorful. It's a site recommended for pre-K-3. It includes pairs of books, not fiction and nonfiction, that engage readers and support literacy. From the Book Flix page, if you choose the family and community category, you will see that there are many different careers that are offered, including police officer, librarian, and president of the United States. The people and places category also includes additional career exploration options, such as the doctor or the anthropologist shown on the screen. There are a variety of activities and extensions that accompany the titles, along with more information on the illustrator and author that are located in the left-hand column. To access a lesson plan for the book pair, you click on the Apple book icon on the top right, and the lesson plans includes objectives, assessments, and curriculum correlations. So you're getting a paired uh, fiction and nonfiction book and then additional resources that you can use with your students. Every year there are five new titles added to BookFlix, one of which is usually available in Spanish 
These are the titles that are available this year for the 2019-20 school year. And while the titles are not specifically focusing on careers, several of them focus on relevant social emotional topics that tie into skills that students need to access, access careers in the future. Also, another thing that is new with BookFlix is that the newer titles include the ability to highlight and take notes within uh, the nonfiction title. That's a new feature this year. The next resource for today is World Book Kids, which is located on the K-5 page in the right column. World Book Kids is an online encyclopedia that includes eBooks, videos, activities, read alouds, translation features, and Lexile levels. In relation to careers, the orange arrows show the three places that are easiest ways to get started. The arrows to the left and the right include a variety of topics that provide great visual interest for students who might be uncertain about a topic. So they can use either one of those. The search bar uh, provides a quick access for students who know exactly what careers spark their interest and it does use the predictive um, text option for students. To demonstrate the tools located at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to show you by selecting the category of important people. Important people, this page provides a lot of different ways to search and limit your resources. So a student could choose a job or achievement, they could choose a time period, they can choose a country or cultural heritage. So this gives them the chance to use limiters to narrow down their focus. So one thing you might do is consider using uh, the job or achievements in the time period categories first. So when I clicked job or achievement, I chose astronauts and aviators and I got 37 results. By limiting the time period next, I can make a choice based either on the history of the profession or more recent develops. Each article shows a picture and a restatement of the person in order to provide content to the reader so they can make a quick selection. Once you've chosen an article, there are lots of exploration choices that are available to students. In the top left-hand corner, they can choose to look at the article, the text. They can choose to look at the pictures, the video, or any related search results. Along the top right, the Lexile level is introduced and options, other options are available to share, download, and print in a variety of different ways, including Google Drive, Google Classroom, and OneDrive. The text can be translated into dozens of languages. Uh, also, it can be read aloud at a self-selected pace, so a student can choose to read it at a slow pace or at a very quick pace. pace. At the bottom of the page, there are links to other resources that are available. Spanish and French translations are found in the orange and the blue icons. The green link goes to World Book Student and provides much of the same resources with a little more content. World Book Student is intended to be an intermediate resource, but students will find the same user-friendly interface text-to-speech, text-speed, media, and sharing options that are also found in World Book Kids. The fourth resource that I would like to share is something called World Book Early Learning. This used to be known as the Early World of Learning. They changed the title and have updated many of the content material in here. It is located on the K-5 resource page in the right column. World Book Early Learning is a tool for very early readers, pre-K through second grade. It includes stories, games, <clears throat> videos, activities, and more for the very early learner. It's very mobile friendly. It includes features like an animated home page, these characters move around, has proprietary stories that use small bursts of content to support micro learning, lots of game based learning opportunities, and reinforces early childhood curriculum with videos, images, and activities. They include some Spanish content, and they are continually adding features and content based on user feedback and analytics. 
So if you click on the people at work category, you will be given a choice of some categories. This is where you'll learn about important people and interesting jobs that people do. You can see um, if you're doing, say, a community workers unit in kindergarten, you could easily find some information here. Students choose a category, and each category includes a brief text describing the job and links to additional stories, videos, images, and activities. So if I click on scientist, I will learn a little bit about what a scientist typically does in the day, what kind of work they do, what tools they use, what, and in this case, even what kind of clothing they wear. You can click on the little speaker to have the text read aloud. So this is easily used with the youngest reader. As we come to a close, I would also like to remind you of a couple of ways that you can extend your search across most of Info Ohio's content and stay up to date. We have a resource called Educator Tools, which includes thousands of standards-based educational online resources. You can search for lesson plans, instructional content, by subject, grade, or format. Educator Tools can be found at the bottom of the home page under Teachers. There's also a link on many of the other pages that shows up. We hope that you would like to keep up to date and stay connected with Info Ohio. You can subscribe to our listserv, follow us on social media, and sign up for our newsletter, which comes out every month. You locate the Stay Connected link at the bottom of the homepage listed under Con Connect to sign up for the listserv and the newsletter. We are always interested in helping connect you to what you need and improving our site. So connect with us at supportinfoohio.org so we can give you a hand, provide you with the information that you need. Thank you for connecting with Info Ohio. I hope you found, we'll find some career readiness resources here and enjoy taking a tour of our site. Okay, I'll turn this over to our next presenter from the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Okay, uh, thanks, Kathy. Uh, Lee, are you ready to roll here? I, uh, here she goes. Uh, you're on mute. I'm not muted. Yet. There you go. There you go, and I'm unmuted. I'm not sure how that happened since we're using the super fancy webinar feature. Folks, if you're watching right now, you are connected through a great big bridging service. We love very much all the crew down in Columbus making this stuff happen. But often I'm connected point to point, one human to your classroom. And if I'm just one face on a screen, not the easiest to necessarily keep all those kiddos engaged, or is it? So here's the deal. When you are getting a really good program from any content provider, they will keep your kids involved with the class in various ways. I'm going to show you two various ways that we handle that from the Natural History Museum. And one thing I'm going to do is involve my lovely assistant over here, the one and only Anita. She's featured in all of our uh, human health programs because we have a pretty big selection of health programs that came from the Health Museum of Cleveland. That's where I was working when they had to sell their building and we moved in here with the dinosaur people and said, hi, we're here to teach all kinds of human blood and guts and stuff. <laughs> and we've also incorporated lots of other topics. So Anita has been with me for many, many years. Her last name is shirt. Think about it. You got it. There you go. Even kindergartners get the Anita shirt joke. Now, here's the situation. During the entire class, I'd be talking about all your body parts. We'd be finding them on our own bodies. But we also have <clears throat> the benefit of real specimens here, courtesy of the Health Museum. So if I was going to segue from, say, skeleton to brain, because parts of our skeleton protect certain parts of our anatomy, I'd have the kids first identify if they could feel a part of their own skeleton. Can you? Well, your skeleton is on the inside of your body, true, but your teeth are actually part of your skeleton. Don't touch your neighbor's teeth, please. That would be weird. Just touch your own teeth. There you go. <laughs> so now you're touching part of your skeleton. And the skull that I have right here is a real human skull. Sometimes museums have real things on display. Sometimes they have a copy that looks exactly like the real thing. And I'll always tell you if I'm showing you a copy of something or if it's the real object. This is a real human skull, and I'm going to use this fancy camera to get a little closer to it. And during this class, we're 
we're talking about the function of bones and how they grow and how when you're a little kiddo, your bones are different than when you're grown up, but nothing really beats seeing it in high detail. So we're going to take a super close look at this human skull. See how all the teeth are missing? I had you all touching your teeth earlier, but they're not there in this skull. I'm going to tip it down that way and super zoom really close on this squiggly line. That squiggly line is called a suture line and it shows where the two pieces of this skull grew together. When you're first born as a tiny baby, lots of kids know that your head is squishy on top. But slowly all those tiny little bone cells start reaching out and grabbing calcium from your blood and fusing all those plates together. And eventually all that's left is this squiggly line showing where those bones went together. If you do this with your hands and mesh your fingers together, you're replicating in a gigantic way. Boom, that process. And there's a squiggly line between my fingers. So that's one way we keep the kiddos engaged is they're feeling things with their own selves. They're seeing stuff on the screen and relating it to reality. We can get a little more crazy with this though and go inside the skull. And that is where your brain would be sitting. Don't believe me? Well, guess what? I'm gonna try to put Anita's half a brain right in there to see if it fits. There we go. Ooh, look at that, ta-da. It's pretty well, doesn't it? So this model is a really good model because they tried to make it exactly the right size and shape of the real human organs. Still not exactly the same thing, but a nice try. We could also use this bone to show off that your bones are not completely solid. If I zoom in right there where we cut this skull in half, you should be able to see little tiny holes all throughout that matrix. You're seeing calcium, that's the mineral that a lot of kids know their skeleton is made of, but they might not realize there's little holes in there where all those teeny tiny little bone cells live. So there you go, there's an example of how if we're teaching a health class, we're having them relate to their own bodies and feel stuff that they can actually do in the classroom. That's fun. Sometimes we just send you a box of stuff. Notice this big red box sitting on the counter here next to me. And if we send you a box of stuff, then you could be taking the stuff out and interacting with that. So to showcase that concept, I'll show you a little snippet from a program called the Science of Seeking Snacks. We have this entomology department here, and they specialize, one of the guys specializes in praying mantises. And he came to me one day and said, hey, could you uh, create a program that's all about brain volume of a praying mantis and how that relates to some of their behaviors and the kids measuring brain volume. And he's, and I'm, I'm already getting bored just listening to him talk. I'm like, well, yeah, I could try, but that doesn't sound the most exciting. How does it relate to something the mantis does? And he said, oh, well, we're looking at their hunting behaviors. I'm like, perfect. That's cool. I like to eat. We can talk about finding food, right? So one of the experiments is, how do you know if a praying mantis is really hungry or if it's just goofing around and chasing stuff for fun? I mean, you can't talk praying mantis or can you? So one thing that shows up in your red box is the actual praying mantises that are used in the research project. Here are two mantises side by side, stuck inside of this amber colored plastic. We talk about how the praying mantises only live for a year anyway. So once the, pro once the research is done, instead of just throwing their little praying mantis bodies away, we put them in this plastic and preserve them. Here's a praying mantis without anything different going on. This one is wearing a very interesting backpack. And that very interesting backpack, here we go, has a little copper wire that is actually going up all the way from the blue part to the praying mantis's brain. Look at this, I'm gonna zoom in super close. Wait, even closer. And if you look really carefully in between the compound eyes, I'm gonna point with my pen, but man, that's a tiny wire. Look at that. A little tiny copper wire is actually going inside that praying mantis's brain, which is pretty doggone cool. Now, why would you stick a wire inside the praying mantis's brain? Because you can't speak praying mantis. Well, maybe you can. We can't. So, by putting the wire in the mantis's brain, you can see the electrical activity that's coming off that praying mantis's brain. As a matter of fact, you can do that with a human. Right here in Cleveland, where we have the Cleveland Clinic, hey man, they do research and studies of the human brain. And I've actually seen videos of a patient lying on the bed, right? And they've got a wire stuck inside the patient's head in their brain, and they're saying, okay, what do you perceive? And the person might say, whoa, I smell roses. There's no roses there. What that little wire is doing is stimulating the cells in the person's brain that know what a rose smells like. Wow. Well, that means you can take a praying mantis, you can put them in a box with some food, and you can observe whether or not they're going to behave normally in the box. 
And I'll wrap up my little part of this presentation with a visual of a praying mantis in a box. And this is one of the mantises you just saw that was in that plastic. And we're going to feed the praying mantis and see if it will hunt that cockroach. Obviously, the cockroach is not interested in being eaten. Hiding in the <laughs> Oh, we got him! There. Now we found out that, yeah, that praying mantis will definitely hunt for food while it's in that box. But if you have the little wire stuck in there on a monitor, you can see the electrical activity. And if the praying mantis is sitting still and that electrical activity happens, where did it come from? It's sense of sight because it's seeing that prey moving. But they don't have to turn their head to move. We do a whole series of experiments to discuss, discuss the idea of compound eyes. So if you have one little line of electrical activity, aha, that's his sense of sight. And then if it turns its head, ooh, now you've got two lines of activity. Whoa, that's sight, and it's moving its head. You can map out the entire insect brain, what, just by feeding a praying mantis in a box. That is some pretty crazy research we're doing over here. And that's a whole program all about comparing human senses to kid senses. So that's an idea of how we keep kiddos involved and active during our programming is we're either doing stuff we sent to you or things in your own classroom. All good content providers do that. If you want to take a look at our program offerings, you can go to our website, cmnh.org, and you will see a word that says learn. When you click the word learn, it will open up a whole bunch of different programs that you can poke around through and take a look at our teacher's guides and all that other good stuff. Thanks for the time. It is now exactly 3.55. According to my piece of paper, I'm supposed to stop. <laughs> so thanks, folks. Enjoy the rest of the showcase, and maybe we'll chat again sometime. Bye. I'm going to silence myself and let Tom move on to the next speaker. All right. Thank you, Lee. Uh, we're going to switch over now to, to Kosi. So uh, go ahead, Jordan. Aside, I wanted to explain just a little bit about the distance learning programs that we do. Uh, Bobby, if you want to pull up my slides here. Um, so the first um, thing I want to do is to kind of discuss the topics of our program. So for elementary schools, we offer programs called wireless workshops, and that just means that they are single point, meaning you're connecting with just um, just COSI and you, just your school or your site. Uh, we have some other programs for middle school and high school where that is not the case, where we connect multi-point. Um, but for elementary schools, we're looking just uh, to talk to you and um, your students. So we're going to talk about the three programs that we offer in this grade band. We have Gadgetworks, Superhero Science, and Intro to Coding. First one is called Intro to Coding. And just like it sounds, we're going to introduce your students to the idea of computer coding. And it is um, a pretty simple introduction. You might be familiar with the um, program called Scratch. So this is a free program that COSI uses, um, that many sites use to help uh, teach the ideas of coding. And um, in this program, you um, get to learn how to move around Scratch the Cat. So you can see Scratch there, and you can see the tools on the left side of the screen. And basically, it's kind of a drag and drop um, the blocks around. So you um, drag the different blocks into the work area there, and you can see how some of these pieces will fit together. Um, so we have the triangle-shaped piece will fit into the triangle-shaped hole. And so it kind of helps the students um, a little bit kind of figure out how these pieces can work together. And so in this program, we um, help your students to um, design their own video game. And again, it's a very basic introduction, um, but through, through this program, your students will learn to control um, Scratch the Cat. Uh, you can move him up, down, left, right, or diagonals. And then we will also uh, teach them to program uh, the ball to chase Scratch the Cat and move him, uh, move around towards him. So you have to avoid uh, the ball that is chasing you. And then we've developed a scoring system um, for the, uh, the longer you play the game, the higher your score will go. And then also a lives system so that if you uh, get touched by the ball, you will lose a life. So that way there's rewards for doing well and um, you know, kind of punishments for uh, making mistakes. It makes the game much more interesting. Uh, and from there, so depending on the age of your students, we might get through all of that. We might get through more than that. Sometimes we can get to adding backgrounds and sound effects and all kinds of different things. 
Um, but um, sometimes we might not get that far. And that just kind of depends on what grade your students in, are in and how much experience uh, they have with coding from maybe they might have some or maybe they might not have any. Um, but basically the program is very adaptable. So whatever, your, whatever level your students are at, our educators will be ready to um, adapt the program towards them and continue on. Um, at the end of the hour, uh, most of our programs are an hour, all of our elementary programs are an hour. Um, we will sign off and leave you with that, but um, most of our programs, including this one, uh, come with a uh, extension activities, meaning you can continue the learning beyond just the one hour session. And that goes for all of our elementary programs. Um, so for this, for example, you could, we would continue on um, if, in the extension activities to do some of those other things that we might not have gotten to. Um, more, more rules that the game you have to follow in order to play the game. Again, extra backgrounds, uh, things like that. The next program I wanted to talk about briefly is one called Superhero Science. It is a brand new program that we are launching in November. We're very excited about it. Basically, it's going to be all about um, physical science and how can we look at some of our favorite um, comic book heroes or some of our favorite comic book traits and associate those with things that we can actually do in science. So here, for example, we are looking at Captain Elastic and we are talking about how his elastic abilities are basically built on the ideas of potential and kinetic energy. So that's a new program that we're very excited about. It will also include extension activities. And um, again, look for that one starting on November 1st. And then the uh, next program I wanted to talk about today is called Gadgetworks. It's one of our uh, oldest and most well-received programs that we have here at COSI. We offer it in two varieties for your older students. Uh, we call it Force and Motion, and we will talk about some of these different um, items here. So what is a force, contact versus non-contact force, friction and gravity, and things like that. And then for your younger students, we have a version called Simple Machines. And again, we talk all about those simple machines. Now in this program, your students will meet Professor Gadgeteer. Uh, he will join them in their classroom. This is a picture of me a few years ago uh, as Professor, G Professor Gadgeteer there on the screen, teaching the students all about um, force and motion. Here we're doing an experiment on friction. Now what we spend most of the time doing in this program is actually reverse engineering our happy crab. So here you can see an example of our happy crab and much like Lee uh, from Cleveland Natural History Museum, we also send supplies to, uh, to the schools. And so in this case, we send a box full of happy crabs, uh, chattering teeth wind up toys and screwdrivers, as well as some other items um, that are used throughout the program and with the extension activities. And so through, uh, with this activity, we will um, reverse engineer the toy, meaning we will take it apart and try to figure out how it works. So we'll use a little screwdriver, we will take the back plate off, we'll look at all the different pieces and parts inside, we will see, you know, if we're talking about simple machines, we will see all the different simple machines inside, the levers, the pulleys, uh, the gears, the springs, those types of things. And then for the older students, if we are talking about force and motion, we will talk about how the force is applied to the winder in the back and it stores up uh, potential energy in the spring and that energy is released as kinetic energy and it exerts a force, a contact force onto the different pieces and parts inside and that's what causes our motion of our toy. So those are um, some of our examples of our different programs here. One thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, like I said, many of our programs or all of our elementary programs are are an hour long, but with that included uh, kit of materials that comes uh, with most of these programs, you get uh, extension activities that can extend the learning. Um, so for the Gadgetworks program and for the Superhero Science, that is an actual physical box of materials where we will send you supplies. For the Intro to Coding, it is just a continuation of those same uh, coding topics that we've started to touch on in, those, uh, in the actual live video conference program. Um, so here we can see, if we bring up my slide again, we can see an example of one of these extension activities here. We are using the happy crab to do a controlled experiment. So we tie a little piece of string to our happy crab, and then we have him pull these big, heavy um, metal nuts. And we change one variable at a time, right? Because that's how good scientists come up with good conclusions. And they add one of those um, 
one nut to the string at a time. You wind it the same amount every time so you know exactly how far or how much you've wound it up. And then you see how far the happy crab will actually pull the different amounts of weights. And that's just one example of um, one of the extension activities that comes with the Gadget Works kit. I want to talk a little bit about how to um, reserve our programs. Um, we have a new online reservation system that this year that hopefully should make it very easy. Um, you can go to cosine.org slash IVC and when you start your reservation, you will be looking for the section called wireless workshops. You'll select from the drop down what program you'd like. Um, if you'd like extra kits, you can uh, choose those as well. Um, and then you can pick a date and a time. And the fancy thing about this system now is that it will only show dates and times that we are available. So when you say you want to have your program on October 30th at 1 p.m., if the date and time are listed in the system, then you know that you can have that date and time because um, the system is doing some checking in the back end to make sure that we are ready. So that should make uh, reservations with us very simple. We hope that it makes it very simple to find a date and time that will work with your school schedule. And um, that is it. There again, uh, our website. And my name again was Jordan Rader. For, and the best way to reach me is video conferencing at cosi.org. And I'm looking at the clock. It is 4.05. So I am about out of time here as well. And I will turn it back over to Tom for the next person. Thank you for your attention today. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, we're going to shift now to uh, Muskegon Valley ESC. Leslie, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I am happy to be with you guys today. Um, I have uh, a couple of programs that I'd like to highlight today. Um, one of them being um, the Quiet Crew ASL Club, which is something new from Muskingum Valley Educational Service Center um, this year. Um, I, I do want to mention that we started student programming here. Um, it was around 2003, so we've been doing it in different scales and in different forms. Forms. We kind of adjust like everybody else does um, with the changing technologies and the, uh, the different things that come um, through uh, education. So um, we're always changing. So if you've, you've done something with us in the past um, and you, you haven't done something for a while, I encourage you to come back, maybe try a few different things because um, just like everybody else, things get changed and our programs do as well. So we've been doing this for probably around 15, 16 years now. We did it on a much smaller scale when I started and now um, we do uh, programming uh, year round. Um, so I wanted just to highlight just a couple of things. Now I will tell you that the majority of our classes are about pre-K through about third grade. Um, there's many areas of focus. Um, however, recently we've been adding um, and including a lot of the career based activities and discussions in our programs um, and also we've been trying to add a lot of problem solving activities that will help um, prepare those students for careers that they will be involved in in the future so um, we really try uh, to do a number of things to keep the kids involved um, like Lee was talking about if they're sitting there they get that um, TV mentality that they're sitting there watching something and we really prefer to have them moving and interacting with us. So you will um, hear our instructors um, try to call students by name and try to get them to realize that, you know, we are um, really with them, even though we, we may be many, many miles um, apart. So um, our instructors do things like um, talking to them and having discussions and brainstorming and all those good things that would happen normally in the classroom. However, we are doing it through video. Um, the new programming that I want to just briefly talk about today, um, this ASL Quiet Crew Club, it sounds like something that you have to be involved with um, for a long period of time, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, these uh, programs can be scheduled um, independently or they can be taken in a group like we suggest. Um, most of our classes that we have piloted this program with have um, done them in a series of five, uh, five topics. Topics. 
And um, what it what we talk about and, and how we kind of relate this to careers is that um, the person that actually teaches us, this is not something that I teach, I do teach a number of them, but we actually have an ASL educational interpreter who teaches these quiet crew ASL club sessions. They're on a variety of topics. Um, anything from letters, vocabulary, different pieces of literature that we try to incorporate into the programs. And then we talk about, you know, what is an interpreter and what do they do and where might you see um, somebody interpreting for the deaf? So you could see them, you know, maybe at uh, sporting events or um, during emergency evacuations, you would might see those people, um, you know, signing for people who um, cannot hear. So we talk about all of those things and we try to embed those things within our discussions and in our activities that we do. So um, with the quiet crew, um, we don't send out a bunch of materials because um, being pretty small agency, we don't have um, the, the, the manpower to do all of that. So we try to do things that are pretty easy for the teachers to access. So um, what we would do is we would send your teacher out some materials ahead of time that they can kind of look over, kind of know what we're going to be talking about in the course of our activity. But then our, t our teacher and our uh, interpreter who is conducting the program jumps right in and they teach your kids some simple signs. So one of the programs, um, one of the topics that we do, depending on the grade level that we are talking with, um, all of these are customizable. Um, so if we are meeting with a fourth or a fifth grade, um, we may not use a very hungry caterpillar or the food within the very hungry caterpillar. Um, this is one that we talk about with our pre-K and our kindergarten folks because this is an Eric Carl book that they are familiar with. Um, we teach them the, um, the vocabulary that go with the food that the uh, students will see in the book. Um, they will be taught like some of the main characters like Caterpillar and um, they will be learn the sign for butterfly different things along the way. And when we teach them these things like we have found that you know when we are combining the physical movement with that muscle memory it produces a powerful learning for these students and sometimes we need to change the way that we teach to appeal to um, many different styles of learning so um, we we really are excited about this we are getting like are getting a lot of good feedback from the teachers that we have um, conducted these programs with. Um, our teachers are flexible on their their dates and their times. Um, and the good thing is that the students can access this from the safety of their own classroom. So um, this one, I'll kind of go through a little bit of this. Um, we we show them and obviously this is um in in f big text and colorful for our our little students that connect with us but we would teach them things like apple and pear and we go through the story and we talk about the different things and we show them the signs um and then at the towards the end of the program we actually show them um a, somebody that is interpreting for the book of eric car or eric carl so let me get to that so you can see um the book and we talk about them to we, we challenge them to find some of these signs that we talked about during the course of our lesson so we have them practice we have them um, moving and and asking questions and and helping us um, along the way doing some different activities so i'll just show you just a little piece of this so that you can get a sense of what um, we're talking about as far as with the interpreter and then i'll show you um, a little piece of the activity that we do at the end of this program to try to reinforce that learning that they have um, that they have experienced earlier on so I'll take myself out and I'll just show just a very small portion of this um, but this is uh, a person that is signing the very hungry caterpillar the very hungry caterpillar by Eric Carl in the light of the moon a little egg lay on a leaf 
And so during One the course Sunday of this, morning, it was, it, we are obviously reading out. the literature, but they are also um, seeing that the interpreter does, in fact, um, do some of those same signs that we just spoke to them about and that they just learned. And then at the end, we would do something like all of our activities have some sort of culminating activity. So at this point, they would, the students would be talking about all of those um, things that we, the vocabulary that we taught them in American Sign Language language and then they would come up and they would show us the sign um, for the animals or for the objects that they um, want to put into the chrysalis so we have this and then the students have a copy of this um, and then they might tell us that they want to put the pear and or they want to put the cheese so they would put those items into um, their uh, chrysalis as they are you know reviewing the activity that we did during that lesson so this is just one uh, subject we do many different sub or many different topics um, that are all taught um, that very same way where we introduce the vocabulary, um, we teach them um, the signs for the vocabulary, we review the vocabulary, and then at the end, um, we have um, given the teacher um, some materials that can help them reinforce what they learned during that session. And then we have different topics. So depending on what the teacher would like to, to have their students learn, we have things like family words, school words, things like principal things or principal teacher restroom all of those things and the good thing about these um, these types of topics are that not only are the students learning this but the teachers are learning this as well so that they can also you know use that for some um, visual clues um, that they can use hopefully for throughout the entire year in their classroom um, in addition to the actual lessons. The lessons are about 30 minutes long, 30 to 40 minutes long, depending on um, the grade level that we are connecting with. We also have extension activities like COSI does, and um, we have an ASL portal, which the teachers will have access for um, for an entire year following um, the time that they have connected with us. And in that ASL portal, we have our interpreter who um, reviews all of those signs um, so that the students can get on to um, the portal, they can review, um, they have extension activities, there's things that they can do. Um, some of the uh, topics they learn their manual alphabet so they can practice their spelling. So there's many different things that they can use, activities to kind of extend um, their learning and uh, to reinforce um, what they have already learned. So I think I am up with time. Um, so I, I, if you know anybody has any questions, they're welcome to email me. It's leslie.charles at mvesc.org. And I am going to throw it back to Tom. And um, I think there is somebody that's coming after me. So have a great day, everybody. Great. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, we're going to switch now to Football Hall of Fame. Go ahead. Take care, Terry. Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you guys to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Uh, my name is Jerry Shock. I'm the Director of Youth and Education here. I'm uh, been here for almost 20 years now. It'll be 20 years in May, actually. So uh, uh, always in the youth education department. So we're excited to connect with all of you out there and all the great content that's across the state of Ohio, bar none. Um, uh, you know, we're a little biased because we're in the state, but uh, some of the best content, if not the best content, uh, from cultural institutions all over the all over the country and all over the world, really. Uh, so schools connect to all of us from all over the world, really, to, to, to see the rich content that's here and available in, 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 in this great state of Ohio. So um, uh, just kind of give you, touch on a lot of the same things you already heard about. The, the program's designed to be interactive, engaging. A lot of content we pull up on the computers, um, you know, sharing PDFs, sharing photos, sharing videos, just anything, again, to engage students. Uh, but one of the programs I just want to touch on today is a program that's by far our most popular. We'll probably make four to 500 connections this year. And I'd say probably 70% of those are probably through this one program. And that's called our Careers in the NFL program. And so it's wildly popular with uh, fourth grade all the way up to 12th grade uh, to talk about jobs in the NFL besides for pro athletes. And so uh, what I'm going to share with you guys here real quick is, is a little bit uh, um, 
some information you have come up here. And so when we connect to schools, we always like to show, like today we connect with a school in Albany area, a couple schools from the Albany area. And we show them where they're at, where we're at. So we kind of go through that. We'll give them a virtual tour through the Hall of Fame by showing that. But then there's a lot of other resources that we have available. And so uh, our Prezi here that goes through the careers in the NFL, uh, we talk about the, 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 the different jobs and they're obviously the most popular jobs being players and coaches. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, as you can see, here's a day in the life of John Harbaugh. But as you can see on this statistic here, uh, and you see the bottom, it's only about 0.02% uh, of high school football players will ever make an NFL roster. Uh, it's actually, according to statistics, it's about, I think it's uh, seven times more likely to score perfect on your ACT than it is to actually make it in the National Football League. And even at that, if you go back uh, to the average NFL career, it's only two and a half years. And so we know the students, youth, their, their excitement for sports and, and their desire to play sports and be involved in sports and just you, you get a classroom to raise your hand and say, who likes sports? Probably 89% of them are gonna raise their hand. Uh, so we try to capitalize on that and, and talk to them about the variety of jobs that are out there in and around the NFL. And so we talk about some of those again in an engaging way. This program, the beauty of this program is that I could connect with five different classrooms in your same school and we could do almost five different programs because we can't even begin to scratch the surface on all the variety of jobs out there in and around the National Football League. Uh, and so what's nice is that the San Francisco 49ers interviewed um, uh, some of their staff members and, and, and gave that content to us so we could use that. So just give an example, I'll just show you one, the athletic trainer for the 49ers. My main responsibility as an athletic trainer is the health and safety of our athletes. Uh, we cover practice uh, every week. We cover workouts during the summer and games um, and really to keep them healthy and safe. Um, I also work with our team physician when they're at the facilities and I also help and so we can go through those. I'll, I'll kind of skip through. Here's some of the other stuff we do just to show social media, some of the tweets that teams put out. This particular series of tweets had a, uh, a hidden message in it that the Carolina Panthers did a couple years ago. And in the first word of each of these tweets is the lyrics to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And so when you go back through, you can see, now this is a story. All right, my, uh, my Prezi just went crazy here for a second. All right, let's escape here. Let me go full screen again. Okay, all right. So you can go through and see. All right, I guess you're not gonna go through and see. That's okay. Uh, for whatever reason, my, my Prezi just went crazy. I'll close out of it. That's okay. Um, but some of the other th pieces we do, we have, we have a, a number of obscure jobs we show at the end of that Prezi. Uh, jobs like, you know, a seamstress uh, that, that, that are in the NFL. We went through and pulled uh, jobs from different media guides from across the NFL. So uh, another resource that we have that's available here, this is a Browns media guide, the AFC North leading Cleveland Browns. I, I, even through a webinar, I can hear the collective laughs and sighs about that uh, through all those that are just tuning in without even microphones connected. But, uh, uh, but uh, hey, they're, they're leading the AFC North right now. Um, as a Steeler fan, and, and I probably hear the collective angers and boos now with that, um, you know, the Steelers aren't looking too well this year, so I can't really talk too much. But what's really neat, what you're seeing on the screen is a, is a staff directory from the Cleveland Browns. And so we can actually go in with your students and talk to them about the variety of jobs out there. This, this media guide is something the teens produce every year for the media. It uh, gives about, it's probably typically 500 pages of information of anything you'd ever want to know uh, about your team. And what's nice for us is that whether we're connected with students in New York, we can obviously pull up the New York Giants media guide. But I mean, just look at how many people we can go through here and look at these jobs. And obviously with college or high school students, we can go in more in depth uh, with, uh, you know, college backgrounds and stuff like that and, 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 and what degrees to go into. And I've had students follow up with me with questions about what universities they want to attend. And, and hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a University of Mountain Union sport business major. Uh, so they have the, uh, they were voted top 10 in the country and number one in the state of Ohio for an undergrad for sport business. So they have one of the best sport business programs in the country. But you can see all the people that, that, that work with these teams, how many people work behind the scenes with these NFL teams. It's really remarkable uh, how many different jobs. So we can use all these resources uh, to do that. Then what we always like to close with is uh, actually just showing them, all right, so here's NFL careers. As I search, you can go down one of the websites. So if any of you teachers out there are looking for a career change, here you go. Here's some job openings in the NFL. Uh, we can go um, marketing and click on the social media producer. So with kids, knowing social media, uh, this is a job that they're, they already do, essentially. Instead of building their own brand, though, they're going to be building the brand of a, a, of a sports team. And so this is the current job opening in the NFL. 
And so here you go, if you scroll down, it gives the duties and responsibilities. And then it uh, gives the minimum qualifications. And then that's, that's when we emphasize a little bit about the, you know, the importance of education and those sorts of things. And so, um, so that's in a nutshell, I, I figured I'd go a little quicker than, uh, and get this wrapped up so we can have uh, a few minutes at the end for a uh, question for you guys. Uh, just so you guys know, all of our programs are free. As you can see behind us, there's a, there's a, a sponsor that's behind us, Extreme Networks. Uh, they allow all of our programs. So whether you do one or 100 programs with us, uh, they're all gonna be free. They're typically 50 to 50 minutes or uh, 60 minutes each one. They're customizable. We do K to 12, we do science programs, math programs, all across the board. But by far our most popular is our careers in the NFL program. And at the basis of all of our programs that we teach at the beginning of every one of our programs, because to me it's the most important thing we talk about, is about what football teaches about life and, and, and how it's about a group of people that come together of all different shapes, sizes, and colors and love and unity in pursuit of one common goal. And so if we can take that recipe, that formula that football shows on the football field and take that to our, to our classrooms, to our communities, to our families, to our churches, to our scout groups, to our choirs, you know, and take that team mentality of saying, hey, I wanna use my unique gifts to make everyone else better on the team we can have something very special that take place. And so that's a message we take, uh, not only across in this area, but across the country and all over the world. Uh, uh, so with that being stated, I'm gonna turn things back up to Tom and I appreciate you guys' time here today.